What's up guys? Welcome to Blake's Garage and another totally tubular two minute tool time Tuesday. Today we got the 2684-20. This is the fuel brushless dual action polisher. So this thing is supposed to be very nice. Yeah, let's bust this thing open. Brushless motor so we know it's going to sound good and last a long time. Now as far as other polishers that I have I do have a Rupes 15 uh, Bigfoot and I also have a Torque 15 DA dual action. Those are the other two polishers I have that I'm kind of going to compare this to. But for now, let's just get this thing opened up. Nice Velcro pad backing. We got the screen here on the brushless motor. So that is very nice to have there. Uh, just keeps any sort of junk out of the motor. And then we have variable RPMs right here. All the way down to 2650, all the way up to 5100. The handle, yeah, it feels nice. I like the grip on this. It does feel good. So this should have a 15 millimeter stroke on it. Some other companies make them with a 21 millimeter stroke or something like that. Now, one thing that for me, kind of sucks, is uh, all the polishers I have are 15 millimeter. Not a bad thing, it does a good work area and all of that, but man, I would love a small polisher offering from Milwaukee. That would be really cool to see. Like a, uh, what size disc is it? Is it a two inch or three inch polisher? Yeah, that would be extremely nice. But M18, let's go ahead and slap a battery on this. Now, if you're gonna be using something like this, I would probably go with an XE 8.0, 9.0, 12.0 or at least a 6.0. Something that's kind of interesting here, this is the first time I've seen this, uh, Milwaukee offset the battery like that so that you can get it closer into a vehicle or whatever um, and it doesn't take up all that room to the front, right? So we kind of save some of that profiling. That's an interesting thought there. So it does look like there's a lock on the side, which is good. 5100 RPM. Sounds good. Uh, let's go ahead and throw a pad on this. So this sounds really good. This is a wool pad here, uh, wool cutting pads. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of cutting compound on here. As we could see right now, um, not sure if we can pick this up, but lots and lots of swirls in the paint. The E30's paint is pretty trash, I'm not gonna lie. This is like a, probably a $300 paint job on this car at most, but that's okay. Let's see what we can make happen. I'm not really worried about the paint on this. V32, um, this is from Chemical Guys. This is a cutting compound. Let's give her four little dabs. We'll try out this polisher. I'm curious as to how this is gonna feel. So, I just wanna hit this little, this little front area right here. Let's give her a go. feels really, really good. Um, the direct, the drive on this, you see how it spins, right? So with light pressure, still spinning really well. Even still spins if you give it a ton of pressure, which is not something you want to do at all, but uh, a lot of cheaper polishers, they'll just bog down and you will literally just see this thing vibrating. You won't see it spinning. Uh, that Milwaukee light there, so we'll kind of give into this, we'll wipe this down. Now this is a cutting compound. We'll go back over it with a polishing compound in a sec here. Wow, that looks, <laughs> that looks really good actually. It makes the paint look not so shit. It's still uh, got a lot of orange peel in it, but man, did that bring out a lot of clarity there actually. So we can kind of see the banner here. See if we, uh, how these scratches get picked up if they do at all. You see how you can use this part of the light here? So this is looking better. Then we'll go over to this area. Hopefully you guys can kind of see the difference there, but the different color temperatures work out really well to, uh, to inspect the paint. So like where I'm seeing the light, I don't know if this shows up, but 
This is so much more murky and like just not clean. And this is like a way better reflection, even on this garbage paint here. I'm gonna hit it one more time. So just like basically all polishers nowadays, they got that hook and loop system in the back. So we can change out pads very easily. So I'm gonna grab a uh, finishing pad. So I got a brand new one right here. I'm not gonna use that. I'll use this kind of older one because like I said, the paint on this car is not immaculate and I'm just doing this for testing purposes. So I'm gonna skip from the V32. That was a pretty heavy cutting compound. Get this looking good. I can either go with the V36 or the V38. This is the optical grade polish. I don't know, that's a final polish. This paint needs a lot of work, so. So we're just going with this couple of squirts of V36 right here. And we'll go ahead and just work that into the area. Prime the pad. All right. It's, hopefully this shows up. Wow, this looks <laughs> so much better. I don't know why I never did this to this car. I just never really cared about the paint on it and now it shows, but dude, I don't know if you guys can tell how much better the reflection is there, but it's a lot crisper. Like I hope you can see the sheen. So here's where that light comes into play one more time. So we can just kind of pick up um, and we can really inspect the paint. So like I see some heavier scratches here. There's some heavier scratches in the paint here. But the optical clarity, so much better. I'll show you from here. Hopefully we can pick this up. It's really hard to pick up on camera, but here we go. From there to there. Okay, you see that reflection like right over here? See how that looks like junk? And then hopefully you can kind of see how that's cleaned up over on this side. See, so it goes straight back to junk. And then a lot crisper. Um, with my actual eye, when I'm looking in on that uh, bright spot, basically that, it, it cleans up really well. So you can inspect your paint very well with this thing. It's really awesome. As long as you have a few Milwaukee batteries, um, yeah, this is the jam for you right here, in my opinion. This thing, this thing is gonna do work for you. Um, I have, like I was saying, like I was stating, see I got this Torque 15. Haven't even used this one that much. Um, I have used this one quite a bit. This is my Rupes 15 Bigfoot, right? This is a really expensive polisher. Um, and maybe I could plug that in, but look, this, this is the big issue, right? We got this going on, right? 30 feet of cord, which is great, Mind you, sorry, I got all my, it's like my little detailing cart and I have a lot of uh, detailing products, I guess. Um, so yeah, you can see, you know, with corded stuff, it's cool, but then you have a massive cord that you got to hang over your shoulder and all that sort of stuff. And that gets kind of annoying. So yeah, this is pretty sweet. Let me go ahead and throw this polishing pad on here. I'll give you one more comparison. I just want to feel I know this one's super smooth, so I want to throw it on there and just kind of compare the, um, I guess, vibrations and the smoothness of the motors on these. Slap that on here. Put some more. V38 now, kind of a final, final polish. You know what? Okay, so one thing I just noticed right here. Let's see. Oh, we don't do that. Um, the Rupes has a better thing for laying down, right? We got these two nubs on a Rupes polisher. Um, not to say you should really be setting it on a car, but that is a lot better. But we kind of know we, you know, set it down somewhere and those two little spots grip a lot better and I feel like I'm not messing stuff up as much. Where the Milwaukee, it does have that as well. But my, my battery's hitting. So, you know, if this was up just a tad bit higher on the rubber, that would be very nice um, on that, but let's not worry about that. That's just kind of, you know, something that I'm noticing there. 
we got to remember this, you know, Milwaukee's not a polishing company where Rupez is. This is kind of one of the, you know, your top, top of line polishers that you might pick up out there. So I'm kind of comparing the two, but now we got that on here. Let's go ahead and get that polish laid down. It says a, uh, from a one to a six, so we'll put it on with a one. Pop it up to six. Give it a little bit of pressure. You can see. One last time, I'm gonna apply some pretty heavy pressure to the Milwaukee brush list just because I want to compare it with that 15 mil stroke. So this at low speed. It's at the highest speed. I mean, honestly, it's pretty similar. That thing's still moving. And it's actually really smooth. It's like very comparable to the roof edge, I have to say. Like, I would have no problem with either one of these polishers. I have both, so I have no problem with them. But. Nice. So, wipe that down. Wow. I can actually see my face, which is pretty cool. So, hopefully you guys can tell. You can see that BMW reflection of the uh, the poster, uh, or the little banner that I have up here. Uh, it looks a hell of a lot better on this, uh, this side right here than it does on the center of the car, if you can see it over there. It's just way, way crispier. So, uh, it polishes, of course, but um, yeah, this thing is sick. Just the cordless nature of it. Now, weight-wise, let's just compare weight here. So that one, okay. Rupes is gonna win in the weight department, but again, um, you know what? It's really not too bad, and this thing is very, it's well balanced. Once I mean, once you have it here, you're just you're literally just holding up the, the battery area. It's got a pretty damn good balance. So I don't know. They're both freaking sweet polishers, but this Milwaukee is the main reason I'm doing the video. And yeah, I absolutely love this thing. Just the fact of when you can just ditch another cord, I absolutely love that. That's why, like, literally, I've pretty much changed all over all my tools that are uh, corded into battery operated Milwaukee stuff. It's just freaking sick. So thanks for watching guys. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like later and wrench on.